Before her marriage to Khal Drogo, Daenerys experiences a prophetic dream. Her thighs were slick with blood. She closed her eyes and whimpered, as if in answer there was a hideous ripping sound and the crackling of some great fire. When she looked again, Viserys was gone. Great columns of flame rose all around, and in the midst of them was a dragon. It turned its great head slowly. When its molten eyes found her, she woke, shaking and covered with a fine sheen of sweat. She had never been so afraid. This seems to predict the death of her son, Rago, in childbirth, and the return of dragons to the world in the funeral pyre of Khal Drogo. The Dosh Kaleen, former wives of the Khals who live in Vaes Dothrak, also claim to have prophetic powers, stating that Daenerys Targaryen will give birth to the stallion that will mount the world, a figure of great legend among the Dothraki, who will unite the Khalasars and conquer the world. A god's wife in the Temple of the Great Shepherd, Miri Mazdur was taken as a slave by the Khalasar of Khal Drogo. Though her life was saved by Daenerys Targaryen, Miri's blood magic would result in the death of Daenerys' son in childbirth. Also, Khal Drogo would fall into a catatonic state. When Daenerys asks if he will ever awaken, Miri replies, When the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seas go dry and the mountains blow in the winds like leaves, when your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, then he will return, and not before. Daenerys goes on to kill Khal Drogo as a mercy. A mysterious shadowbinder from Ashai who wears a red mask, Quaith, has taken a great interest in Daenerys Targaryen and has advanced several interesting prophecies. To go north you must go south, to reach the west you must go east, to go forward you must go back, and to touch the light you must pass beneath the shadow. This seems to indicate Daenerys must go to Ashai. When asked what she has to gain there, Quaith replies, Truth. Soon comes the Pale Mare, and after her, the others. Kraken and Dark Flame, Lion and Griffin, the Sun's Sun and the Mummer's Dragon. Trust none of them. Remember the Undying. Beware the perfumed Seneschal. This seems to warn Daenerys of the coming disease outbreak of the Pale Mare, and the many potential allies coming to court her, such as Victarion Greyjoy, the Red Priest Makoro, Tyrion Lannister, Jon Cunnington, Quintin Martell, and possibly Aegon Targaryen, who may be a Blackfire working on behalf of Varys. The final part about the perfumed Seneschal may refer to Raznak Mo Raznak, the Giscari Seneschal of Meereen, or perhaps Archmaester Marwyn traveling to Slaver's Bay. In Karth, Daenerys enters the House of the Undying, where she receives a number of visions. First, she sees a beautiful naked woman being ravished by four dwarves who resemble servants. This may foretell of the War of Five Kings. Next, she sees a feast of slaughtered corpses and a dead man with a wolf's head, sitting on a throne, wearing an iron crown. This seems to envision the Red Wedding. She sees her childhood home in Bravos with the Red Door, and then sees her father, Ares II, ordering the burning of the Red Keep during Robert's Rebellion. She watches as her elder brother, Rhaegar, names his son Aegon, claiming he is the prince that was promised. She also sees wizards, offering to teach her the secret speech of dragonkind. Three heads has the dragon, three fires must you light, one for life, and one for death, and one to love. Three mounts must you ride, one to bed, and one to dread, and one to love. Three treasons will you know, once for blood, once for gold, and once for love. This seems to pronounce the importance of the number three, with three heads of the dragon and three great betrayals. Daenerys herself seems to believe the betrayal for blood has already occurred with Miri Mazdur. Next, she sees the death of Viserys, a vision of a copper-skinned man with silver-gold hair and a burning city behind him. This may be a vision of what her son Rago may have become had he survived. She sees the death of her brother Rhaegar, who mutters the name of a woman before he is killed by Robert Baratheon. She sees a blue-eyed king without a shadow, possibly Stannis Baratheon and a cloth dragon swaying on a pole with a cheering crowd. There is a great stone beast flying from a smoking tower, breathing shadows. She sees her horse, Silver, traveling through grass under a sea of stars. A corpse, smiling with bright eyes and gray lips, standing on a ship. And finally, a blue flower, growing from a chink in a wall of ice, possibly indicating Jon Snow's Targaryen blood, or a possible connection with Jon in the future. A red priestess of R'hllor, the Lady Melisandre joined the cause of Stannis Baratheon, claiming to have seen in prophetic visions that he is Azor Ahai reborn. She even uses her magic to make him a Lightbringer sword, though it does not give off heat as the real sword should. Though she often claims to see visions in fire, her predictions have not always been interpreted correctly, such as her vision of Arya Stark leaving a loveless marriage to come to the Wall. Though she was correct that a girl came to the Wall escaping a loveless marriage, the girl was Alice Karstark and not Arya Stark. The actions of Melisandre are largely guided by the ancient prophecies of Azor Ahai. There will come a day after a long summer when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world. 
In this dread hour, a warrior shall draw from the fire a burning sword, and that sword shall be Lightbringer, the Red Sword of Heroes, and he who clasps it shall be Azor Ahai come again, and the darkness shall flee before him. When the red star bleeds and the darkness gathers, Azor Ahai shall be born again amid smoke and salt. And while she is convinced Stannis is the hero reborn, she has also been heard saying, I pray for a glimpse of Azor Ahai, and Relor shows me only snow, possibly suggesting she has been wrong in her interpretations, and Jon Snow is in fact Azor Ahai. She saw the eyeless faces again, staring out at her from sockets weeping blood, then the towers by the sea, crumbling as the dark tide came sweeping over them, rising from the depths. Shadows in the shape of skulls, skulls that turned to mist, bodies locked together in lust, writhing and rolling and clawing. Through curtains of fire, great winged shadows wheeled against a hard blue sky. This seems to foretell of the rangers John sent north who would be killed by wildlings. Melisandre associates the towers in the vision with East Watch by the Sea, though admits they do not look alike. A face took shape within the hearth. Stannis? She thought for a moment, but no, these were not his features. A wooden face, corpse white. Was this the enemy? A thousand red eyes floated in the rising flames. He sees me. Beside him, a boy with a wolf's face threw back his head and howled. Here she appears to see Bloodraven at his seat in the far north, accompanied by Bran, learning the ways of green scene. Snowflakes swirled from a dark sky and ashes rose to meet them, the grey and the white whirling around each other as flaming arrows arched above a wooden wall, and dead things shambled silent through the cold, beneath a great grey cliff where fires burned inside a hundred caves. Then the wind rose, and the white mist came sweeping in, impossibly cold, and one by one the fires went out. Afterwards, only the skulls remained. This seems to foretell of the massacre at Hardhome, and an attack by the others against the wildlings. The flames crackled softly, and in their crackling she heard the whispered name, Jon Snow. His long face floated before her, limed in tongues of red and orange, appearing and disappearing again, a shadow half seen behind a fluttering curtain. Now he was a man, now a wolf, now a man again. But the skulls were here as well, the skulls were all around him. This may reveal Jon Snow's warging abilities, but may also reveal the method by which he will survive his assassination, warging into ghost for a time before returning to his body. It is not the foes who curse you to your face that you must fear, but those who smile when you are looking and sharpen their knives when you turn your back. You would do well to keep your wolf close beside you. Ice, I see, and daggers in the dark, blood frozen, red and hard, and naked steel. Here, Melisandre seems to see the betrayal of the Night's Watch and the death of Jon Snow, warning him to be wary. That creature is dangerous. Many a time I have glimpsed him in my flames. Sometimes there are skulls about him, and his lips are red with blood. In reference to the fool of King Stannis Baratheon, Patchface, Melisandre seems to imply he is a man who will be surrounded by death, possibly even a servant of the Great Other. 